Hello, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and today I'd like to share with you a nightmare. Uh, what we have here is eggs that have been inspired by a famous movie called Alien. Uh, and it so happened in the summer of 79, I was a lifeguard on Coney Island Beach, and I was living alone in Brooklyn, New York, in an apartment. And I saw Alien, the movie Alien, for the first time. Alien was designed uh, by this artist named H.R. Geiger, who was known for his wonderful works of grotesqueness. And he was amazing. And he designed the creature. And on the movie, um, I was uh, privy to uh, how they created some of the geometry, etc. And evidently, they uh, used parts for, of oysters and things on the actual mask and you know the alien had this kind of jaw that would come out and it was so um you would see it dripping and it was just it was just horribly scary and i remember in the summer, summer of 79 living alone and after seeing that movie i had to sleep with the lights on for a few days <laughs> i'll admit it it was so scary uh and so i thought i would be uh, have some fun um and create some geometry that was inspired by the egg. The egg in the movie, if you ever saw the movie, there were scientists, there were explorers who came down in the ship and they were fascinated with this egg and they got really, really close to it. And one of the scientists got so close and he was astonished when the thing opened up and, you know, blasted through his mask and grabbed him by the face. And it was just, oh, horribly scary. It was amazing. There was a wonderful imaginative work. And if you like that kind of uh, suspenseful horror, um, it, it, was, it, was, it was superb. So anyway, uh, what I did then was I uh, grabbed an uh, image of the egg. And I started to create um, the geometry that, uh, that emulated it. I figured that this uh, egg was about four feet high. Um, at least in the movie, that's what it seemed. And so I took the image, I brought it in, and I started to sketch over it. And I'll show you how I did it. Um, let's go back in time. Let's go to this current feature here. Go all the way back. So I created a sketch that simply looked like that and revolved it, of course. Um, then I created a base. Uh, I created this sketch, this really thin sketch, which I used to extrude and I, su and I subtracted, and that's what made the sections. Um, I think the creature has actually four lips that come out, but I went with three. Uh, and then I did a bunch of blending. And so I had this kind of basic shape. Um, then, let's see. I did some sketching down here because I knew I needed to uh, chop the uh, shape, the basic shape, up into sections. And then I made a bunch of curves. And the curves were curves on surface. Curves on surface. So there's a lot of those. And here, let me uh, control shift K. Let's bring them out so you can see them. Um, oh, I know. Let's go to uh, View Layer Settings. Let's make sure that all the layers are on. They are. They are. They are. Okay. So here, let's go. Let's just take a look at all the curves here. There's many, many. And show them all. Let's do this. Show. Show. So as you can see. I created uh, sketches that went all the way around the circumference of the alien and some internal ones. And in each case, these curves had to be closed, see? And they had to be created on face. So this was a lot of um, judgment, a lot of artist, I'll call it artistic hand work. Um, okay, so that was laborious, uh, but it turned out really great. Uh, then I made this uh, sinusoidal curve, this curve here, because I knew 
that I wanted to use it to drive a sweep. So here's the sweep. The sweep starts at the beginning, the start point of this curve, and it's a circular cross section, and it gets larger and smaller and larger and smaller. So the curvature is driven, I'm sorry, the cross section is driven by uh, this little sketch here, and that is a sweep swept, and the sweep swept has a by law curve to control the, the, um, the it's actually a perimeter. Um, of this shape. See, here's the actual section. And then it starts to look like ripples. And so I did a number of those. Let me show you. Okay. So here's a bunch of these um, nice little uh, sweeps that I did. And it's looking really cool. Um, and then I united them on and then I blended in between them. Um, I did this little blistery thing with an n-sided surface. So in order to do that, I had to take the edge here, uh, which was um, created by a curve that was projected onto the surface. And then I had to make a little uh, sketch on it, a little profile. And that little profile was really uh, just this little line segment right here that I then did a sweep all along that edge and what that did is help me establish this angle uh, at which the end, the end-sided surface uh, meets the edge. So all that does is create this little ribbon. When I do a sweep, it goes all the way around the perimeter and it does this ribbon. And then when I do a end-sided surface, the end-sided surface is looking for uh, the edges of that ribbon. So if I double click on end-sided surface, you can see that I, um, you know, you select the curve and then for uh, your constraints, you select the face. And so I selected that little ribbon, which forced the middle to, to bow out like that. So that's how I got the little blistery thing that, that makes this so uh, interesting looking. Okay, so I did a lot. Let's make this current feature and see what that is. Okay, um, then um, I did some subdivision of faces and thickening, and I did a bunch of blends. So I got these kind of raised blisters, if you will, that kind of go hand in hand with these ripples. And so that took a, a long time to kind of figure out exactly what the best way to do that was and all of that stuff. So there you go. There's a bunch more of the ripples. You know, it's like when you uh, put your arm together, there's all this ripply, or, you know, when you put your elbow, <laughs> it's all this ripply stuff there. <clears throat> so it's supposed to kind of emulate the ripples on the original egg like this. And it's really grotesque and so on and so forth. So um, obviously I didn't get it, you know, that accurate, but I borrowed the feel of it from this picture. Okay, good. And so then I did a bunch of points. Let's make those the current feature. And the points serve the purpose of uh, creating sites for me to create the little bumps. There's a, there's a bunch of little bumps on here that make it look so kind of, um, uh, sea life like as if they were barnacles and so I created a bunch of points and on each point I took I put a different sized sphere united it all together and then I blended it all together so as you can see it looks like kind of uh, pimples or, or blisters and so that really uh, gave it a, a interesting look so it was really starting to get there and um, then uh, I really wanted to make it open up and have something dangerous looking come out of it. <laughs> and so what I did was I sectioned off. There's three sections basically of this thing. <clears throat> and what I did is I cut the sections off, leaving just these kind of 
uh, these lips. And then I did a um, global shape, global shaping to bend those lips out. I'll show you what I mean. The global shaping here, <clears throat> right here, these little pieces um, were global. See, this is one wasn't done yet. So what I did is I, I made them separate and then I created a straight line and a curved line and I did global shaping by curves. And that's why it looks like it's opening up like that. <clears throat> and it looks so dangerous. This is a, this is a copy. You know, of course, I, I finished with this model and then I copied it over. So because I needed to experiment, experiment on it, I didn't know exactly how to get this to, to uh, happen right away. So that was fun. And let's see, what else did I do? Okay, so then I patterned it. I patterned this one. So I had three of them sitting in a row. Um, and then I did this sweep, which was also driven by a law curve. So here's a law curve. It's a sinusoid that decays. And the sinusoid defines the law. So this curve right here is what's defining the, the um, cross section of this shape here. So this is the baseline and this is the dimensions that it's supposed to follow <clears throat> and they're jagged. So that means there's an alternating small big, small big, small big distributed along this kind of vector. And I also decided to rotate it as I swept it along and made it converge. So it makes a very interesting looking little tongue, if you will. Okay. And then finally, I decided to make some grass, some weird alien grass. Here it is. And the alien grass is really just a uh, revolve. I revolved one of these little lobes um, and then I patterned it with a stagger, but then I also, uh, once patterning it, I also uh, took those each member into a spreadsheet and did a rand function that would add or subtract a bit of geometry and so I made the grass. So I had a lot of fun making this model. Um, to me, when you want to practice modeling and you want to get better, it's really important to build things that you think are difficult. And this is a difficult model. Um, this will uh, soon be available on our website. So you can take it and decipher it and go over the little bits and pieces that you may have missed as I explained it. Again, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. This is so much fun for me. I thank you so much for uh, watching these videos. Please like and subscribe and tell your friends about them. And we're going to keep these uh, wonderful works of art, if you, if you will, uh, coming. I think uh, there's a lot of amazing geometry that you can capture with NX. And when you borrow visual cues from stuff that's like exciting or, or stuff that's beautiful or whatever, it really um, helps you improve. So. Thanks again.